And how y'all doing? This is JPTV3000, and I'm here with Joe. Joe, man, appreciate that, man. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Joe, what's, man, what, what brought you to North Dakota, and what's... Well, I'm, uh, I was living in Texas almost 30 years. Got my college degree in engineering in Pennsylvania, and uh, a master's in uh, Texas from University of Houston. So I'm basically overeducated, and I retired at age 40. And then I hit hit that 2008 reception and lost everything. I had multiple properties, uh, declared bankruptcy, and then my parents had cancer, so I moved back to Pennsylvania, kept a few properties in Texas. And in Pennsylvania, through 2008, 2009, and 10, there was nothing but minimum wage jobs, and I got tired of sitting home. Couldn't get anything back in engineering. It was really bad. It was depressing, 08, 9, and 10. And then I had a friend that started a mechanics business up here in uh, Williston. And I said, well, hell, I just tagged along, and I've been here ever since, 2012. And uh, I got my first job at Walmarts. And uh, with all the overtime, who would who'd have ever thought you can make 21 bucks an hour at Walmarts with overtime, make over 70 grand? So that's what now, I did. That's a get. That's a game changer. And people don't look like, hey, <laughs> you know, you know, because you think about that. One from Walmart, you might make twenty something a year, twenty and some change, maybe thirty. You know, but you talking about that? That's like, you don't need to go to the oil field when you can work at Walmart and get that. And, that, and that's a lot more laid back. You stay clean. Now that was 2012, and yeah. I was there maybe a year and a half. It's all changed now. As, the, as Williston matured and the oil field kind of declined, everybody wanted to drop those high labor prices. So Walmart quit the overtime. What was 21 and 18 is now 14, 15, and 17. Yeah. I think they're. I think now it's now it's starting to go the other way around. Yeah. Now there's now they're short. Now they're hurting. Now yeah. they're hurt. So so now I'm seeing 18 for cashiering. So yeah, I actually I was just there the other day. They want me to come back, but I'm. I got so many things in a fire here on these, uh, like I was inspecting a drill pipe yesterday, 18 bucks an hour. Um, still trying to get back into engineering or something technical, and I think I'm, I think I'm real close. But I'm also close to retiring, so I could take Social Security in a few months. You know, that, that's that's a big issue. It's probably you don't want to. Talk, that's nothing to do with Williston. But I, I bought some property here, and the winners here are a challenge. <laughs> you gonna you gonna pay some hefty energy bills if you're you don't get yeah. a, a good a, a good uh, insulated house. Yeah, especially if you're trying to stay in a camper, you gonna burn you gonna you gonna run through that propane. I did my first year. I was in a camper, and uh, that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. I, oh God, there was nothing when Williston in 2012. That's all there was. Yeah, there was no housing. Period, and then they overbuilt housing. Then it went from. In, in when I was there, Williston had more. It was a price of a price of apartment per month was higher than Manhattan. It was twenty six hundred dollars for one bedroom. Yeah. And now now it's kind of flipped. It, it went the other way and it, yeah. it became cheap. You could get a one bedroom apartment or rent a room in town for four hundred, five hundred. Yeah, and I was hoping it was gonna stay that way. I was like, because that was about 15, 2015 or so, like. Twenty fifteen, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was good. Everything was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. it was nice and balanced. And the labor costs came down. Now it's yeah. starting to it flip the other way. Now yeah. everything is on the rise. Rent uh, apartments are filled up. And they're coming. And that rent's coming back up too. Man. And right now, I'm just. Uh, I was thinking of selling my house because. Uh, I pay. I, I got. It, I got it for a steal. I paid eight or twelve thousand dollars, fifteen for the land, so I can four times my money. And I think the market's right now. There's only ninety nine properties for sale in Williston, in this area. That's a record low, and everything is sold out where I live. So the, the real estate has really come back. Some of these people that moved here are complaining they can't find a house. Yep. So you're going to see a construction boom coming up the next few years so you know if I stick around I might take advantage of that I wouldn't mind starting a housing company it's a small you know affordable housing company yeah especially if you can get into like remodeling remodel yeah well yeah but that's it you know there's not much there's nothing for sale these these little tiny two-bedroom one bath everything you know the old 1950s yeah. 
20s houses yeah, here. Yeah, like downtown and stuff like those like that, yeah. They're all considered obsolete. Yeah. In, in, in today's market where everybody has two kids and wants a two bath. But up here, you got to get what you got to get. You gotta, yeah, you, right, exactly. yeah, you got to get what you can get. And you got to pay. Yeah. And uh, But the jobs are here. It's coming back. Of course, the oil price is down 52, 53. Yeah. After after Walmart's, when I was at Walmart's, my my college degrees came in handy. I actually taught college. I taught oil field technology for a year at Williston State. Dude, <laughs> just would you? Dude, you, you, I mean, you got a lot of options here, man. It's, it's just a matter of what it, what is your passion that you would like to do and you would be happy doing. You may just want to stay for another five, ten years. It just you know, it just kind of depends. Exactly, and and I tell my friends this in in this town or in this state. Uh, very few people want to come up here for the winters, but if you want to change, if you, you know, my life, I, I, if you want to teach college, you can if you hustle and got two college degrees. I never taught in my life. I actually, it was fun. I actually enjoyed it. It was a challenge. You know, there's a lot of red tape, and I didn't realize that. Uh, and I got paid pretty, pretty well. You know, a uh, nine month contract and the summer off, and then the oil boom. You know, when the, when the 2015 it was. Yeah. When it crashed, uh, they changed the program around, and uh, uh, I was no longer needed. And they, I think, they hired two people doing different things after me. But uh, so here I am trying to figure out what I'm going to do. But I, but the opportunities are there. I was just, uh, I was out on a pipe job. They were inspecting drill pipe, and my engineering mind kicked in. And I talked to the owner out there, and I, I, I saw some material handling opportunities that change. You know, just buying the right equipment and doing yeah. a few design changes, so I could get a job helping them and, I, and i'm going to talk to them next week so maybe i can start a consulting company doing uh, uh material handling with drill pipe or oil filled pipe because a lot of places a lot of people up here came up here and set up shop pretty fast they're in the early infancy of of optimizing their their facilities here or their their operations yeah. so it's like anything else when you start out you have more labor than the equipment so there's a lot there's a there's a lot of opportunity in professional jobs here that a lot of these companies aren't taking advantage of. Yeah. Because either they can't find anybody and they don't have time. They're too busy working. Yeah. Everything is short here. Yeah. And they may not see it. You know, they you might know, not see you know, it. You know, right? Just like you said, you know, it's you know, it's kind of like the opportunity for uh, entrepreneurs and people that want to start businesses up here. You know, when you get away from here and you get into those bigger cities, somebody's already been on it and they've been doing it for 15 years somebody's already been on it and they've been doing it for 30 years but up here you've got plenty of things that you know okay no, nobody's doing this in this avenue nobody's doing that in that avenue or well, there's a shortage and they need more people to go out and do service call for trucks and change tires or you know do 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 uh, uh advertising sales you know you know, you know it, it, just, um, just about anything you think of because i'm pretty sure you've been here long enough to see that technically, Williston should be five times this size. If easy, people, if, easy. If people had been able to come in by laying at a reasonable price, build homes, they would have done it. They would have put in permanent roofs. Then fewer people would have left because they would have already had a, a house that they're paying on. They would have already had, you know, permanent roofs start to settle in. Because once you get to that point, that's when, okay, you're going to be here. Then the next generation is going to be here. Kind of like the way it was before. And this, I like Williston because it, it it's grown on me. You know that's why. I, I, yeah, it does grow. It, it, yeah. yeah, it's there's there's some there's some tough things here, but at the same yeah. time, it does get it. it there's an addiction to it. Yeah. Uh, and plus, I mean, like you're saying, uh, this town doesn't even have a Starbucks. Yeah. We just Popular. got the Starbucks. The Starbucks oh, like, in, in in Albertsons. You're kidding. Yeah. Okay, so it's got a Starbucks. I that mean, was last month. I mean, we only have two grocery stores. Yeah. I mean. And some of these small towns, they have nothing. Yes. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And uh, North Dakota has been, uh, especially this area, it's been number one, two, or three on small business startups. If you yeah. if you could start a small business, your success rate's going to be high because there's nothing here. Yeah. People are overlooking this place, and people are screaming. And people people under two. A lot of the oil field work is two weeks on, two weeks off. These people don't know what to do. They'll they'll drive home to Texas or whatever they're from and go yeah. go do go go do something instead of being here because there's nothing here. Yeah, because on my off days, I'll like if I don't go home, which I kind of go home every three, four, or six months, 
I just I just go drive somewhere. The, the only thing is, it looks exactly like what I just left from. Left like I, I went to Gredora, came back down to a Medicine Lake, and I'm like, all right, they got a gas station. I know that. <laughs> but at least I can say I've been there because I'm like, yeah, I'm probably I'm positive I'll never go back to Medicine Lake ever again. But, you know, at least I've been there. You know, so it's, it's plenty of opportunity. And then if you look at the Walmart factor, your, your next Walmart is 200 miles and east, and then what, 200, 175, maybe 150 miles south to Dickinson? That's it. That's it. Or my, uh, my not, I think, has one. Yeah. But, but, I mean, two hours. I mean, two hours that way, two and hours. And everybody in Montana shops here. Yeah. I mean, everybody comes here. And uh, this place reminds me of Houston in the early 1900s uh-huh. when they first found the big Clear Lake oil field and all that. And look at Houston, the fourth, the fourth yeah. largest city in the, in the country. And this place here is such a sleeper. I, th- I think in in my lifetime, this probably could be easily become. That's what I'm thinking. Could become the largest city in North Dakota. There's no there's no reason it can't. And because the oil field here, I, it's a hundred mile radius. Yeah. And this oil field has a lot of potential. And everybody says, "Oh, the Bakken's dead." It's not. That's no, not true. No, no. Production's uh, one one point three or four million barrels a day. And your success rate, you punch a hole in a 100 mile radius in here, your success of hitting, finding oil is like 98%, 99, 98. And most of that time, that 1% is usually a problem. Yeah. And and the lease, uh, in Texas, they're paying 50,000 an acre for a lease for oil. Here, it's as low as 500 an acre to 5,000 or 10,000, depends on, depend on what area. There, there's a lot of areas out where I live, you could buy it, you know, me and you could buy a lease. Yeah. <laughs> But it's amazing. So this this place it's actually set up to, to, to be successful. It's right. set up to win. Once they get once they pass all the politics of getting more, they're almost filled. There's they need more pipelines. I think this this last one they had all those uh, political ob- obstacles yeah, with the, the, uh, the one that, Standing Rock yeah. protests. But the thing is.